Bora TV. The world is thinking. So how do you float a wind turbine? Uh, in, in working our project, uh, we asked ourselves, who are the best people to partner with around the world to develop this technology? Uh, ironically, it's the oil and gas industry. They've been building oil and gas floating rigs for the last 40 years. They learn how to build floating things out in the ocean and maintain them. So we've partnered with them. We've partnered with uh, companies such as Technip and others uh, that, that, are, that do this kind of work. And, and we're borrowing designs from floating oil and gas rigs to, to build these floating wind turbines. Okay? So what's the simplest design out there that's, that looks like an oil and gas rig but ho holds up a wind turbine? That design is called a SPAR, S-P-A-R. It's pictured right here on this photograph. What's, an S, what's a SPAR? It's a big floating tube with a big ballast at the bottom. If you took a two by four, eight footer piece of wood, okay, a, a, from Home Depot, and attached a piece of steel on one end and tossed it into the water, what happens? The piece of steel end is going to sink in, right? It's going to straighten up if you have the right balance of weight. Okay? And then it's going to be standing up like that, and if you push on top and let go, what happens? It comes back, right? Now, instead of being eight feet long, now think of it as being 500 feet long, being 27 feet under the water, 20 feet above the water. Okay? That's what we're talking about, supporting a five megawatt turbine bigger than anything else we've ever built on land. Okay, why? Because we don't have to truck them down on land and take them to the top of mountains. We can build them very big right on shore and take them out. Our vision here is to do this like we build boats. Take our boat building industry and reconfigure the industry to build these. Okay? Bath Ironworks built ships in what we call dry docks. Dry docks are big, empty bathtubs, essentially. You can fit a ship in and, and, and build the ship inside, inside the empty bathtub. Then you flood the bathtub and then you open the door and you take it out there, okay? And we want, to build, we want to build the same thing here. We want to build these offshore floating turbines just like we build ships, okay? And we're going to tow them out there with a the tugboat and drop anchor 20 or 30 miles out there so we don't have to work out in the middle of the ocean. We're doing everything on land and we can work here around. That's the, that's the vision that we have that DOE, the Department of Energy, bought into and that's why we got funded with our group of about 35 companies to make this happen. There's, of course, other ways to float these, if you're interested. One of them is called a tension lag platform, or TLP. Uh, that, that's, a, uh, that, that's depicted right here in this picture. It's got a floating unit and then tension cables. These cables are tensioned and the tension in the cable keeps it from tipping over. Okay? And the, the other design is called a barge or buoyancy stabilized system. Uh, and here's an example of a buoyancy stabilized system. You have three floaters like a trimaran and you can put a tower on them. Okay? Now, uh, again, please remember these things are very big. Now you think, is this going to happen or is this just a dream? Well, the, the, the interesting thing, it did happen. Okay? There's a company called Statoil out in Norway that is currently operating the only and single floating wind turbine in the world. Let's tell you a bit about the story. Statoil is a Norwegian oil company. How many of you have been to Norway? Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, it's actually the, 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 the richest country in the world per capita. And the richest, the, the, they are the richest in the world uh, because they have a lot of oil, oil and gas offshore. And they've been actually doing, uh, building oil and gas rigs. Stadol has been. Stadol is a Norwegian oil company. It's uh, either the sixth or seventh largest oil company in the world uh, and the largest offshore oil company in the world. Um, and, and they've decided a few years ago to build a floating wind turbine because they thought that's the future. And, and this is the turbine they built. It's 2.3 megawatts. To give you a sense, it's 213 feet from the water level to the hub of the turbines. The, the rotor diameter is 270 feet. Okay? Uh, it's 27 feet under the water. It's about 300 feet under the water. Now, how did they build it? Well, they built it in Finland by, with, one our par, with one of our partners called Technip. Uh, Technip is, a, is an offshore oil and gas company that assembled the yellow part, the one that goes under the water in Finland. That thing is 300 feet long, 27 feet in diameter. And they made it in Finland and towed it horizontally across the sea to Norway. Okay? When they got to Norway, they stopped about half a mile away from a, little, from a city called Stavanger, Norway, in a protected bay area. Now, how many of you have been to Stavanger? Okay, Stavanger reminds me of Bath or, or Portland, Maine. It's a kind of a small city um, and uh, the hub of the oil and gas industry out, out, out there. And, and, and it's a very beautiful city, picturesque with a beautiful bay. And everybody was watching with binoculars to see what that oil was up to half a mile away. Now, how do you think they righted this thing up? It's 300 feet long, 27 feet in diameter. They added water to one end. They had a compartment on one end. They pumped water in and the whole thing tipped up vertically. 
Now, and, and, and then once they did that, they added more water to sink it in and then and hugged it with a big barge uh, so it's to reduce the differential motion between the barge and the tower. Then they used the crane to lift the turbine up 300 or 200 feet in the air and then the blades. Uh, and then it was all assembled half a mile away from Stavanger, Norway, standing vertically up, floating in the middle of the, of the bay. And then they took a tugboat and towed it 10 miles offshore, all assembled, all ready to go and dropped three anchors, like, you, like anchors on a boat, they're called drag anchors, 10 miles away, up to sea, and they have it connected to a cable to the, to the mainland.